I know you always have not necessarily hot takes, but you're not you're bold with your opinion. A lot of people say that defense has been good this year. A lot mm. of people say the defense has been number one, which it has in terms of yards per game and certain statistics. What side of the ball do you think is better, though, for the 49ers right now? It's a tough one, man. I, cause it's, I mean, statistically, it's the offense, obviously. Statistically, it's the offense. But is that just a small sample size? Is it because the defense let off the gas a little bit and tried to pace itself? at the? It could be. We'll see what happens in the playoffs. But to me, right now, the issue with the – I mean, the, the, the offensive line isn't great. But really, the biggest issue with the offense forever was the quarterback wasn't good enough. He was too mm-hmm. limited. And the Niners could do a lot with him, but they just weren't good enough, and they couldn't score enough points. And that was the problem. Now they don't have that problem anymore. Like I don't, I don't know if Brock Purdy is a franchise quarterback or if he's a Hall of Fame quarterback or whatever he is. But right now, with him, the offense is like scoring 30 points like without trying. And the defense all of a sudden is showing like if, if the pass rush isn't at its best – there are problems uh, deep. And without Greenlaw, they are not as good as they are with Greenlaw. So, um, yeah, I think right now the offense is better, and at least that's a good thing because it seems like this is the kind of team where both both units are really good right now. Right. They might be winning playoff games. Like, basically, the uh, the typical 49ers score down the stretch this season was the Niners win 37 to 13, 14. I mean, that's... 38 to 14. That's a they kick. Shh. I'm not going to curse on your channel, but they're really destroying teams, and that could just keep happening because it looks like this is a golden opportunity for the Niners to win a Super Bowl. There's really no dominant team in the NFC right now if it ain't them, because Philly looks like they like they peaked already, and so you got so it's like a free ride to the, the, the Super Bowl. It seems like, and uh, then you you know you got the Chiefs again or or Buffalo like. You're always going to have to go through one of those guys, so this is it. This is a great opportunity to do it. You got you got the offense and the defense right now. Yeah. And next year, maybe maybe Brock Purdy gets figured out, and it's not the same. Right now, this is like the the Nick Foles. You're rolling. Teams are have are on their heels. They don't really know what to do. Should we stop the run? No, that's not going to work. I mean, he's going to play action you to death. What do you do to stop? I don't know. So this is it. I agree. I think it's a tough one. I think the 49ers are probably a top – I'd say top five offense. I don't know if they're number one right now. I think uh, <clears throat> I'd still go with the consistency of Kansas City, Buffalo, and maybe even Philly uh, mm-hmm. over the entirety of the year because the 49ers obviously have been great, what, the last maybe eight, nine, eight games, maybe nine games if you if you're talking about it offensively, essentially since Christian McCaffrey came in. Yeah. But yeah. I think you do have to still ride the hot hand. You've got to go with the team that's better right now in playoffs. Maybe the defense is just tailing off at the beginning of the uh, – towards the end of the season because they're getting ready for the playoffs. But right now, the offense is getting as better as as, as good as it's ever been, while the defense is not. They're, they're leaking, getting a little worse. Leaking away a little bit. Yeah, they're leaking it, a does little it, Does away. it remind you of 2012 a little bit? Like when Harbaugh was here – the mm-hmm. defense was way better, especially when Alex Smith was the quarterback. But then Smith got hurt, you saw this and rise. Justin Smith got hurt, and Kaepernick came in. And it wasn't that he was necessarily way better than Alex Smith, but he was new. And teams didn't really know what to do yet, and the offense took off, and the defense kind of fell back. And they eventually lost the Super Bowl 34-31. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, that could be what happens in this game. Where I'm a little concerned that where they get deep in the playoffs, and all of a sudden they go against an opponent that comes out doing what the Ravens did to the Niners in that game. Bombs away at Chris Culliver and Carlos Rogers right now. And to, and to, right now, no respect for your secondary. And it worked for the Ravens in that game. That's 10 years ago. But, I mean, the Niners are built the same way still. It's the same scouts. It's the same philosophy. Front seven. Do do the best you can in the secondary. And now Diamond Lenore is playing like Chris Culliver, at least. Like, he's in great position, but he didn't make the play. So, I, I'm a little concerned about that. And the one thing that scares me going to what you just said about the bombs away kind of strategy for opposing teams. I don't know. I mean, the Raiders game is the Raiders game, but I don't know if the 49ers can win a shootout against a good defense. That's something that I don't know. Teams can have a shootout against the 49ers. Teams are going to be able to throw deep because guess what? The teams that we've mentioned, the Dallas Cowboys, the Philadelphia Eagles, the Kansas City Chiefs, I won't put Buffalo. Buffalo. I don't think their offensive line is as good. But those, yeah, but, but, but even Josh Buffalo, Allen can create it. Got, Josh yeah, Allen can, can can buy time. We saw, we and he's saw got the arm. You, yeah, exactly. Josh Allen is not going to dink and dunk against the freaking 49ers. If he's going down, he's going down swinging. So I Buffalo think. and then Kansas yeah. City. I'm not going to put yeah. Minnesota in there. I don't care about Minnesota. Maybe Cincinnati, but. although the, the Niners. Sack, oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, maybe Cincinnati. Cincinnati. 
Cincinnati yeah. you'd put in there. Their offensive so line's the better this year. Yeah. 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 Those are the five yeah. teams where I think their offensive line can sustain good enough for deep passes to be thrown. And that is an issue for the 49ers because if you have Diamond Lenore and Talano Ufunga on the same side of the football field, you might see a coverage bust a game. A coverage bust leads to more offense being scored. And remember, deep plays— You can't have them on the same side of the field. Gibson has to be over the top of Lenore at all times. Was that the—I want to go back and look at the—that might have been the adjustment. Like, okay, if you're going to go deep at Lenore, we're putting Gibson right there. That's the smart thing to do because Gibson's all over that. Yeah. And the issue issue is also, like— when you we, we don't mean deep plays by 75 yard touchdowns. What I mean is when you have a deep play, if it's a 30 yard gain, if you have multiple 30 yard gains, that significantly decreases the amount of yards you need to get. This to yep. me is a formula, a yards per play formula. That's like three like first can, downs right there. Exactly. Three first so downs. So that yeah. that allows yeah. that offense not have to face this defense for three consecutive first down drives. Exactly. Which means that they might not be able to tire. They might not tire out. Right. They might not. Which have is why it's better to take shots than to try to work your way down methodically. It's too hard to work your way down methodically. It's painful. Dre Greenlaw will mess you up. Nick Bosa will wreck your play. Go deep. Go exactly. deep. Exactly. Yeah. And if we're being honest, right now. I still don't trust Brock Purdy deep down the field. I just don't know how that arm strength is going to hold up against cornerbacks that are going to be in stride. Now, yeah. what I do trust is Kyle Shanahan to scheme open those receivers, and then that's where I trust Brock Purdy. Oh, that receiver's open. I have the aggressiveness. I'm going to I'm gonna throw that thing downfield. But what makes me nervous, though, is if Kyle does the thing that he did with Jimmy in the playoffs where Jimmy has a, like a – a bad throw or a shaky half and Kyle's like, I don't trust you anymore. I'm going to win this game in spite of you. You got to trust your quarterback to win a Super Bowl. And if Kyle and this, all of a sudden decides, I don't trust Brock anymore, I mean, the Niners aren't going to win the Super Bowl. So they, he has to trust the kid. Has and to. this is this is the year where Kyle Shanahan, in my opinion, is going to be tested the most. So mm-hmm. far, he's passed with flying colors. He's potentially the coach of the year, if not the coach of the year. He's passed. And he's done a great job. With and if Brock it ain't Curry. him, it might be Pete Carroll, the guy he's facing this year. I'm saying what, what he did with Gino. Yeah. supposed to be the worst team in the league. Just saying. <clears throat> That's true. That's yeah. true. Yeah. But the thing about Kyle here, Kyle understands right now that this team is better in the air. They're a better team in the air. That's how sure. they've worked. They've they've been a phenomenal running. Their, their running back running is a better receiver than a running back, and he's that's a good exactly running back. Why that's yeah. why they're the best team in the year. And right. Kyle has to understand this is different than the years past. Playoffs is physical. You need to be able to run the football. We'll talk about Elijah Mitchell in a little bit. You need to be yeah, able they're to run five the deep at running back. Exactly. Yeah, but yeah. you're going to have to throw the football this year. It's mm-hmm. not going to be one of those eight passing attempt games. You're going to have no. to throw the football this year because mm-hmm. that's the way your offense works. And mm-hmm. that's where I, I wonder, is Kyle Shanahan going to have the aggressive or at least the willingness to execute the game plan as he's done the past 10 weeks? Or is yeah. that game plan going to change due to the nature of the game? Because uh, to Nick, like to Doug Peterson's credit a few years ago when he had that run with Nick Foles, he didn't lose his nerve in the playoffs. Like, oh, I got Nick Foles. Sure. And this is a big game. So let me just hand off 50 times. Like, no, they had a, like a formula that they used that worked for Nick, and it, and they they wrote it the whole way, and they were scoring big points. They put up how many points in the Super Bowl to beat Brady? Like 38, something like that. I mean, yeah, that's what Kyle has. You have to really trust him and lean into this and not be like, oh, Brock almost threw a pick. Shut it down. Shut it down. Because that's what he did with Jimmy. And maybe it was right. the right call, but uh, – I, I don't think you can win a Super Bowl that way. Right. I yeah. wonder, though, uh, to end this kind of topic about offense or defense, I wonder how the offense plays in the playoffs went down. We've only seen that once, right? Against the Las Vegas Raiders, Raiders with Brock Purdy. Great. Yeah. It was a good job. I think Purdy didn't do very yeah. good in that game. I thought it was probably one of his worst games put on film in terms of missed opportunities. Yeah. But you've also got to take the good with the bad. Purdy yeah. let them back. Purdy got them. Into, Twice. Uh, yeah. He got them into scoring position twice, twice. and led them yeah. back for for the drive. Obviously, Robbie Gould missed one of those one of those kicks. One of the other one was a touchdown, but he led them back. There's something about quarterbacks like you can kind of feel their confidence or anxiety through the television screen or when you're watching. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can kind of feel their emotional level. And with with Brock, it feels like his heart rate hasn't really risen yet. He's been very calm, calm. Mm-hmm. in ways that you don't like. Even like Jimmy's not calm like that. Jimmy, he'll plant himself in the in like when he gets hit a few times, all of a sudden he's skittish. He wants to stand in one spot and look pretty and and look not sorry and uh, basically not have to move and keep his jersey clean. But 
there are times when he looks, you can feel the anxiety. And that's most quarterbacks. I feel like Geno's that way when he plays the Niners. He's like, yeah. with Tua, Tua against the Niners. I was like, man, I feel for you, but I wouldn't want to do that either. But Brock just, I was expecting it from Brock. He looks small. He's a, he's the seventh round pick. He's a rookie. I would, every quarterback looks terrified on the field at a certain point. Not him. And that, that bodes, maybe it'll change well. In the, maybe it'll change in the playoffs, but I don't think it will. And to, in my opinion, that's the difference with mobile quarterbacks. To me, mobile quarterbacks that sometimes are a little too, like when 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 I say calm, I think they're a little too hyper in a way. But right. because I gotta because move. exactly, I gotta you move. have the tendency yeah. to move. It's a yeah. good thing, but it's also a bad thing. That's why yeah. a lot of times when you talk about mobile quarterbacks and the sacks, a lot of the sacks are on the quarterback itself right. instead of the offensive line. Right. Now, some people will say Brock the last couple of weeks has been, you know, leaving pockets that he shouldn't. Um, maybe. He's only st- started a few games. He still has to learn what to do in the NFL. But so far, uh, I love his mobility. And it's why I think I missed on him. So had I re- – I didn't really look as hard as I should have in his in his college tape. I watched him in training camp. You were there. I mean, mm-hmm. there's not a lot of scramble opportunities. I just didn't yeah. know. I didn't realize he's as good of a, uh, an athlete. And I didn't either. Yeah, his feet, dude. Bill Walsh would love this freaking guy, man. His footwork, his just the quick feet in general. He would love this guy. I'm, I don't want to speak for a man who's passed away, but I just get the feeling you would love Brock Purdy. Right, like in training camp, I could sense the the pocket presence. In my opinion, sure. that was his number one skill. I thought that, that was his number one skill, but we never saw it because in training camp, you're not trying to go and improvise on plays. You're trying to hit the play given to you. Right, and guys aren't literally trying to hit you, so you don't have to make anyone miss. He right. he can make these dudes miss. Is crazy. Yeah. Does it routinely? That spin yeah. out of that. I mean, he's like he's like Kyler Murray with his first couple of steps, he, and he surprises people. He's like, oh, I'm gone. I'm like, what the hell did he go? He was right there. Yeah, he was right there yeah. a second ago. And the funny thing, he didn't test well. He's not a, he's not fast necessarily, but he's got that he's, ten yard split. He's got Who that knew 10 it yard actually? Split. Who knew it, it would actually translate? I don't know. I just didn't see it when I was watching mm-hmm. the uh, the Iowa State clips that I saw. I didn't realize he could be running around like this. It's very nice. And if you want, you gotta have this in the NFL. I, you can't be a guy who's stuck in one spot unless you're Tom Brady or Peyton Manning. You gotta be able to move around a little bit. Joe Montana could, Steve Young could, Jeff Garcia could, Jimmy couldn't, and it was one of the major limitations in his game. Brock can't. It, yeah. it, it's a big difference between them. I agree. I agree. We got a super chat here from Maynard Keenan. I'm legit scared about this game. Almost exact same position as last year. Swept the Rams, got taken out in the NFC Championship. What's your thoughts here? I get it. I totally get it. I, I think a lot of Niner fans are thinking, oh, easy. Seahawks suck. I, uh, it's a really well-coached team. You could argue, I mean, you could argue that Pete's one of the best coaches in the league. He's a champion. He's mm-hmm. right there with Andy Reid in terms of accomplishments. He's really freaking good, and he's a defensive coach. He's faced Kyle a lot of times. I mean, that being said, the Niners are just better. They have a better roster than the Seahawks. Agreed. So if they lose this game, it would be very, very – I mean, controversial wouldn't even begin. Like, all the goodwill that the Niners had build up, built up in their 10-game winning streak would go away, and the Niners would come out all offseason, which is – there's so much pressure on the 49ers this week. There's no pressure on the Seahawks. That's another thing. Um, but I, I fully expect the Niners to win this game. Fully. Yeah, They're agreed. way too good. To, I, it would have to be like multiple turnovers, which can happen. But it would have to be multiple turnovers. It would have to be a game like that. There's no way that Geno is just going to put it all together and dice them up. I just don't see it. I do think the turnover battle plays the biggest difference. What I'll say, though, on the turnover battle over the since week eleven against the Arizona Cardinals, the 49ers have not lost the turnover battle. That's how good go. they've been. They're number there one in go. turnover differential. They have not lost it in the last what is that nine games, eight games, something like that. Look, the Niners kicked the crap out of the Cardinals, and that makes everyone feel good, right? Um, the defense showed up, but it was the Cardinals and David Blau and Trace McSorley. I keep I keep going back to the Raider game, right. and I just how did that happen? It was the number one defense in the league, and you let Jared Stidham go for 350 and all those rushing yards. It's like, well, Geno Smith's a lot better than Jared Stidham. And Agreed. he's got weapons, too. And he's got a running back, too. And I don't know, man. Like, I really am a little flabbergasted at what happened with the defense. It, was it just a one-off, or or is the defense leaking oil? Is, is this going to be something? Like, are they going to make 
Geno Smith a legend this Saturday. I don't know, man. I I don't know because they made Jared Stidham a legend in my mind. What was that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see this weekend. Yeah.